So most people fuck up because they approach this whole freelancing thing from a, okay, let me do a $200 gig, $500 gig, $1,000 gig. And that's, that's cool. Like it's everybody, whenever we're first getting started, if you're making 500 bucks, even a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, it's, it's awesome. For many of you, that's like about a, a week's pay, two weeks pay. So it's attractive. However, it's extremely limiting because if you're always having to go after brand new $500 gigs, $1,000 gigs, $200 gigs, I mean, what are you building? Uh, you essentially have a job, a little bit ba better paying than the average job, but you still have a job. What's going on, guys? Dylan Madden here. So just to pause this training really quickly, basically what we just went over is most freelancers focus on gigs. They want the $200 gig, the $500 gig. They want that quick money. How I'm different and how I teach all of my students is to play the long game. You don't want to be chasing $200 and $500 gigs. You want to be getting paid month after month, thousands and thousands of dollars from a few clients. So you have two to three clients and they're paying for your entire lifestyle. And then from there, you can build other things, whatever it is you want to do. But I just wanted to make that difference in your mind right now is the money bag way is getting retainers. It's not chasing these gigs. But with that said, let's continue. So the whole, I guess you could call it the money bag method to freelancing is you go out and you actually get retainers. So you have a client that's paying you a couple grand every single month. And what does that give you? It gives you sustainability for one, because you actually are building a business. You've got $2,000. Let's say you've got one client paying you two grand. Okay, well, if one guy's paying you that, now you can take on another. And you get predictable income. And then down the line, you can actually start hiring people to do some of the work for you. So for any of you that don't really know, I do email copywriting. That is my main income. That's my bread and butter. Of course, I've got everything that I do online as far as like my brand. I've got all that type of stuff. But my actual bread and butter comes from email copywriting. However, at the point that I'm at now, I don't do most of the writing. You're probably like, oh, my God, how, how do people pay you? Well, they pay me because I understood early on. I'm really good at coming up with ideas, campaigns, organizing those ideas, and then I make shit happen. So I've got somebody that comes in, they do the writing for me, and then I go through and I tweak it and I edit it and all of that. So I make sure that everything is progressing as it should be, but I don't have to actually do a lot of the writing. I've got a graphic designer on the team. I've got all of that. However, right now, you shouldn't even be thinking about that or worrying about that. I just want to open your mind to the possibilities of where we can take this together. Right now, your number one focus should be on one, getting testimonials. You, I mean, <laughs> unless you have testimonials, you're pretty much talking shit. And people that talk shit don't last in really any business. But we're obviously going to talk about freelance. So your main focus needs to be having a proof of concept. You don't want to be a, a one of the best copywriters in theory. You want to be a copywriter that you know for a fact if you work with me, I'm going to make you money. Like the reason I can tell people you are leaving five to six figures a month on the table that I'm going to help you scoop up is because I've done it time and time again for my clients every single month. You don't want to be a, an amazing web designer. I had a student of mine who was going on and on and on about how good of a web designer he was in the very beginning. It's like, oh man, that's awesome. Well, this, this is going to be super easy. Uh, so show me some of the websites you've made. And he's like, well... I made a website, uh, I think I was like a senior in high school, and I haven't done anything. So I was like, okay, well, how can you say you're a good web designer? He's like, well, I'm, like, I've got a good eye for websites. I was like, yeah, this, this bullshit. Like, you, if you're going to be a web designer, you need to actually have plenty of things in your portfolio of websites that you have successfully built. You need to have a proven process. So early on, whenever you're doing this, the whole like getting testimonials where you have one to two people. Uh, that can vouch for you, that have given you a written testimonial, a video testimonial, and you get that via, I have put it inside the, the resources, you do that by reaching out to them. You don't ask for anything in exchange outside of, they absolutely love it, and they give you a testimonial. Early in the, like, I'd say like six to eight months ago, I had so many people reaching out to me. I had people writing sales pages for me. I had people writing uh, tweets for me, doing all that type of stuff, and all they wanted it's a testimonial. And that was when a light bulb just went off in my head. I was like, oh my God, this is how you get the testimonials super easily. And I've been telling other people to, how to do it. Because by that point, I didn't need the testimonials. I'd already worked with so many people. But when you're just getting started, 
that should be your, your main priority after you pick your skill. So once you pick your skill, then you start applying it, and then you get a testimonial. Once you have that proven concept, everything else is easy. It's basically just a numbers game. And not on this call, but in the future calls, I'll go into exactly how to look for clients and find clients and all that type of stuff. Uh, but with that said, I think you all basically been caught up. If you missed the first call, does anybody have a question? Let's go I one do. at a time. Perfect. Hello. What's up, bro? Uh, first off, good afternoon. I really appreciate all the content you've put out, and I've been studying it closely and learning from it. But my first question is, should I form an LLC, and what's the best way to make money without getting taxed heavily? Right. So everything I'm about to say is not legal advice, blah, 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 blah. This is all inter for entertainment purposes only. Uh, my opinion, entertainment purposes only, since this is recorded, uh, don't even worry about it. Like, unless you're making like 10K a month, it, they're probably not going to come after you. But that said, I do know uh, that the IRS just hired a ton of people. Uh, so I'm assuming they're going to be coming after a lot of people. So it is good that you're thinking about it. Uh, but like, what is your income from this particular thing you want to form an LLC around? Right now, I'm only getting $500 deals because I'm still early on. So right. I have two clients. I'm working on getting another one today, actually, but I'm not Perfect. at the 10K marker. So, but then yeah. I had a had another question kind of going off of that one. Okay. So what's the best way to accept payment then? Because I've looked at PayPal and I've looked at Stripe and they always ask for like business information and things like that. Right. Uh, I mean, so that's kind of answer your first question. I would not worry about it yet. You could go ahead and form an LLC, like, as you've already proven the concept, you've already got clients. Uh, and if you're going to do that, I would form, it's uh, Delaware LLCs are good. They, the Nevada LLC is good. The Texas LLC is good. Now, I'm sure Florida is good as well. I don't have any personal experience with that. But you could go ahead and form an LLC because uh, that would give you some benefits as far as various payment processors, all that type of stuff, uh, such as PayPal. But as far as accepting payments, at this point, the only two things that I, like, I would still accept PayPal. Like, I know that a lot of people shit on PayPal. I make memes about it because I have had some issues. Uh, they always get quickly resolved, but PayPal can be annoying. Uh, so for you specifically, look up WISE, and that's W-I-S-E. used to be called TransferWISE. Now it's just WISE. Uh, that's basically how I pay anybody that works for me. I pay them either through that or I pay them through crypto, uh, which leads me to the not the other option is crypto. I mean, you could have your payments paying you uh, USDT, BTC, Ethereum, et cetera. Uh, and that's a very good way to accept crypto That's actually, or payments. That's actually a part of mine. I, I talked about this on a Twitter space. All of my lifestyle stuff is paid from two of my clients. Everything else just stays in crypto or other, like I've got some stuff in stocks, et cetera. Uh, so that's also just from a financial standpoint, a very good way for you to quickly build up money is figure out, okay, how much money do I need on a month to month basis? Okay, great. I'm going to have two clients that all of those retainers go towards my lifestyle, whatever else it is that you want. So if you need five grand, okay, you know that you need at least five grand coming in from two clients that pays for everything. Uh, and then the next step is, okay, every other client that I take on, I'm not going to touch that fucking money. It does not exist. Uh, and then very quickly, you're going to have a nice amount of money bags just stacked up. But uh, yeah, bro, do you have any, does that, does that answer your question? Yes, that pretty much answers all my questions. Dylan, you are a genius, man. Perfect, brother. I appreciate that. All right, peace. Peace. What's going on? Do we have anybody else? Hey, Dylan, how's it going? Fantastic, bro. How can I help you? As far as like reaching out in the DMs, like on Twitter or, or Instagram, mm -hmm. would, you, would you recommend doing it from your own, like your own personal main uh, IG page, or would you do it from, or would you start, would you start a new IG page centered around right. the things you do? Okay, so it's things like this, I need a little bit more context, but let me give you an answer. Like for me personally, I use my personal IG account. Uh, however, I do have the advantage of, if you look at my Instagram, it's the Real Dylan Madden, not the newest one. Uh, Real Dylan Madden, I've basically built as a mixture of a personal brand, 
uh, with just my, I guess, day-to-day -day lifestyle brand. Uh, so if you want to use your personal one, you want to make sure that, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to judge anything that I see on your profile. You don't even have to tell me, but like, obviously you wouldn't want to have like a picture of you drunk out of your mind, like passed out on the ground or any of that nonsense. So if you do have stuff like that, you might want to clean it up just a little, have it very professional looking. And then you're also going to want to mix up uh, to make it more of a brand oriented page. So literally just look at my, my Instagram. Like I post my quotes. I post, I like if I wanted to get email marketing clients specifically through that account without just the DMs, I would also start putting out uh, content around email marketing. So you can, whatever your skill is, you start putting out Instagram quotes around that uh, on top of your day-to-day -day lifestyle stuff as well. Uh, and you can, so to answer your question, yes, you can use your personal account. Uh, you just want to build it as if it's a brand, not just your like personal, like, hey, look at me at Starbucks, look at me doing this, like all that boring shit. Like, I would not use that. Uh, so if you want to keep it separate, the next step would be making an actual brand page for your company. Uh, and when I say your company, I don't mean you have to have an LLC and all that other stuff. It could literally be uh, like for me, Moneybag Enterprise. I could make an uh, Instagram account around that if I really wanted to. Uh, but like I said, I'm leveraging my own personal brand to want to attract people, but also to give me some credibility. So like if somebody sees me, that oh shit, Dylan's got like 18, 19K on Twitter. His Instagram's got 11K. I see him traveling. I see him meeting all these people. Like it's just obvious that I know what I'm talking about, or at least I'm competent enough uh, to be worth talking to. So I can leverage that. In your case, I would lean more towards having a personal brand uh, so you have your personal stuff, uh, but anything that goes live, you have to think about how people are going to perceive that. Uh, so does this make me look better and more confident, or does it take away from that, make me just look like an average Joe, like, oh, cool, look what I'm doing with the boys on the weekend. Uh, so as long as it's making you, it's raising your status, making you, sh like, showing that you actually are competent, and then you sprinkle in some stuff built around your specific skill set or a specific niche that you're targeting. Uh, so if, like if you're trying to target fitness people, I would create content around fitness. I would show myself eating a certain type of way, explaining why I'm eating this way, uh, showing me working out. Why am I working out this way? Here's a great tip that helped me do X, Y, Z on top of all my personal stuff. And then that's going to attract anybody that you would want to work with in a fitness realm. They'll be like, oh, this guy obviously knows what he's talking about. Like, he's in decent shape. Uh, he knows about all this type of stuff, blah, 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 blah. And that gives you authority in their mind. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. Perfect. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, even better. Do you have another question? At the moment, no. Ah, perfect, perfect. Okay, anybody else? I have another one, but it's not about freelancing exactly. Perfect. What's up, bro? So were you in Miami this past weekend? No, I'm actually going to be going there uh, in the next day or two. I've got my flights booked and everything, and I'll be flying there. Yeah, I've been bouncing all around the U.S., though. Okay, yeah. I was kind of wondering, like, I know, I know you're not allowed to say too much, but, like, what types of topics are covered in the war room? Right. Uh, are you talking about the war room itself or like the events and all that? Whatever you're allowed to answer. Right. Okay. So, I mean, obviously the events are built around specific topics, uh, a wide, like you actually get like what we call direct transmission, which means like there's certain things you can't just type out. You have to feel, you have to experience it directly uh, for it to make sense. So a lot of like the higher level shit obviously goes on in person uh, because you can try to explain like via words how XYZ works, uh, like how, like whether it's from a relationship standpoint to a business standpoint, mindset standpoint. Uh, but if you can actually see it in the flesh and like, oh my God, this actually exists and they can explain it and you can actually feel it, uh, that would be the best way I could describe the event. So whether it's, I know Iron Shadows can't really go into that, but that's some like high level mindset, hypnotist uh, type of stuff. Uh, some other things as well. Once again, can't really talk about it. Once I'm actually on the ground, I'll find out what I can actually show, what I can talk about. 
Uh, but like Iron Shadows is like one of my favorite events to go to because they go into like some really deep, like energy type of stuff, mindset and all that. As far as the war room, the best way I could describe it, at least for me, uh, was more of an accelerator. Uh, so like for me, I was already interested in making more money. So already interested in the mindset stuff. I just had no I, fucking idea what was real, what was possible and all that. And I, I just got tired of all the mindset is the key live life intentionally like I, I got tired of being told that type of stuff and I, I saw Andrew I saw Tristan and I ended up meeting them in person this was like 2019 uh, so I've been in the war room for a while by this point uh, so for me it gave me like a sense of direction uh, number one which is what a lot of men are missing today but then two it gave me like it showed me like tangible stuff like okay it's actually possible to make millions of dollars is actually possible to drive these types of cars It's actually possible to do this to do that uh so for the war room for me personally it made a lot of things that i wasn't even aware of real in my mind but then two it accelerated me what do i mean by that well through the network within the war room through the conversations uh, that you have on a day-to-day -day basis it just there I, I can't really describe it outside of it's just a, an energy shift like everything starts happening much faster uh, so for me, just to give all of you uh, an understanding, I've been trying to figure this shit out for years by this point. Uh, let's see, like I quit my job in 2016 because I was like, okay, fuck this. I need to figure this shit out. And I was trying all these different things. Met Andrew and Tristan uh, in 2019, six months later, flew first class to live with them for three months. And I've been traveling the world ever since. And that's been like two and a half years later that I've been traveling. Uh, so for me personally, it like showed me, wow, you're not crazy to them. Like you can actually have this type of lifestyle. And then two, obviously when you're talking to people, like what you're doing right now, you get to talk to me, you get to talk to other people that are like teaching various methods. So it makes it actually more real for you. And you get that sense of clarity uh, that a lot of people are lacking. So it's like walking into a room, it's completely dark and you're trying to find where the light is. And then somebody like me or any of the other professors, we come in and we just flip the switch on and you're like, oh shit, I'm here. Uh, so it gives you a sense of clarity. So for me personally, that's what the war room did. Uh, and I've, I've got so many fucking stories from other people that joined and just everything clicked. Uh, for me, as soon as I joined, like, I was like, I could feel this was a little bit different. And then I, I started going to the events or talking to people and everything just accelerated after that. Uh, so whether you're trying to do the whole freelancing thing like I'm doing, or maybe you want to get into crypto, or maybe you want to get into more of the operator style stuff, whatever it is, like you can go directly to the source. You don't have to go through all this noise, uh, like on Twitter and Instagram, like you get to go directly to that person and learn from them, whether it's in real life or, or, or maybe it's on Telegram or maybe it's on calls, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what the war room is and has been for me. And that's why I've been a member since like 2019. Dude, that sounds awesome, like beyond belief. Then my last question would be like, as a young person right now, I'm only 21 years old, not making the most money I'll make in my, in my life. Would you right. recommend joining with my first 8K? So that's always one of those questions where it really depends on the person. Uh, like if you're the person that you can drop the eight grand, you can get into the war room and you immediately, like you know what you're going after and you're willing to do anything and everything to make it happen then most mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, if you're the person on the other hand, where they think, okay, I'm just going to join the war room and then magically everything's going to change, uh, then I'd definitely say that person isn't ready. But if you're the person that you're going to get into it and you're immediately going to start leveraging the network, you're going to start providing value or learning at least. Uh, so even if you're sitting in the back, you're still absorbing all the information, but you're taking advantage of it and you're sharing like, yo, I took what this, like I took what Dylan said and I closed 8K worth of deals I took what this person said and I did this, this, and this. If you're that kind of person, bro, like you're 21, you join the war room, like you're going to be fucking killing it uh, within like a year, if not faster, uh, if you're that type of person. So like you're going to join and you're, you want to apply it and do all that, you're going to crush it, bro. Awesome. I'll be there within the next year. So I can do it. Go. Oh. See anybody else? I think we got like 10 more minutes. I want to get to any of you that have any type of questions. I know we got 13 minutes. Hey, how are you doing? 
Um, I've just recently joined the Wallow Um I saw another Wallow I mean the yeah, Hassel University. So I'm from the Middle East, so pardon my oh. English. I just wanted nice. to um I'm not sure. I just wanted to know if there is there any gap in the market because I've took a, like a little search about you. I saw that you've been in Qatar and Dubai before, right? So, any advice for that? I just because I just started. Uh, I'm kind of into web design and graphic and graphic designer. So, right. is uh, there any what country do you live in? Either of the ones that I've been. To? What's that? Bahrain. It's a small country. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so obviously I don't know much about that specific country because I haven't been there, but I know whenever I was... The Gulf is still the same. Yeah, All the countries right. are together. Right. Well, yeah, so same. whenever I lived in Qatar, uh, like I was seriously going to start an office, start a company, and do all that. Like I was already in the process. Uh, and the only reason I left was they were about to start making certain things forced if you wanted to have an actual lifestyle. So I was like, okay... Yeah, I, I know that. But I will say there is a huge gap in the market for people that can actually come in, uh, manage social media accounts, create content. Uh, there's also a huge demand for actual websites. And then more importantly, uh, and this fits the whole money bag way of instead of just going after one time gigs, you go after retainers. Uh, so there is definitely a huge demand for somebody that can come in, set up a website, set up the email list, do all that, and then maintain their website, maintain uh, various aspects of that business. Uh, so to answer your question, I think there's a giant gap, especially I'm assuming, and I'm almost guaranteed to be right, you speak Arabic, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so you speak Arabic, you speak English, like you're golden, because uh, that would have been an issue I would have ran into as I don't speak Arabic. So I would have had to hire somebody that could speak Arabic. So since you can speak English, they're going to respect you more. Since you speak Arabic, they're definitely going to respect you. Uh, so you could come in and like whether like you want to work with people like such as myself, so people that speak English, they want to get into that market, or and I know there's a lot of guys that want to, or you work with rich Arabs and you can speak English, you can speak Arabic, and you can help with the website stuff, uh, online marketing, social media management. I mean, there's so many different ways uh, that you could fill those gaps because I know in Qatar it was so fucking brand new to them. Whenever I was explaining Twitter stuff, Instagram, YouTube, like just literally blowing their mind. Uh, and I spoke to various people. One of them was a girl that worked for a company there making like eight grand a month, managing a Twitter and an Instagram. It literally, bro, like I saw the, the engagement that those accounts were getting. I was like, there's no way that you've been working for these people for like two years. And they're, oh, yeah, blah, blah, like because they have so much money. They're just, oh, yeah throw it at this problem, throw it at this problem. So if you could come in there and show one, you're a high value person, uh, like you can do that through social media. You can do that just through your, your body language, how you dress, how you carry yourself. And then two, that you actually understand online marketing. You could come in there and you could start off the rip, just charging five, eight, five to eight K a month uh, to do all these things. So yeah, I, I definitely think you, there's a lot of potential for you. Uh, actually, I didn't realize that because Bahrain is a small country, so we're a little bit advanced from the other Gulf areas. So, yeah, you open the, I have a light bulb, a bulb, as you can say now. So there's a oh. lot of ideas. And I actually work in the Bahrain parliament, so I know how to be with the VIPs. So hopefully, thank you. Thank you a lot. Hi, anytime, brother. Let's see, nine more minutes. Do we have anybody else has a question? Yes, bro. Can you please read my message? Yeah, Check. let's see. Second. Okay. Germany, friend. Okay, so to answer your question, uh, like social media as a whole, uh, work like whether it's in Germany, elsewhere, it completely works so i'm assuming uh, and you can type in the chat i'm assuming you only want to work with people that speak german is that true um i could actually make it in english but my english is like when i type it's okay because i can use grammarly 
But when I go in the sales call, maybe they wouldn't buy because my English is not the best. Right. So, hmm. I mean, what you could do in the beginning is you could build an account, maybe an Instagram or a Twitter account, and you could start targeting people uh, to speak German. Uh, you totally could do that. Your other option would be like just from the get go, like create content related around English. And the reason I say that is there's definitely a lot of money there to be made for you. And uh, as long as you type well in English and then you can have like a regular conversation, like they're going to respect that. Uh, so it's not going to be an issue. As long as the communication's there, it's not going to be an issue. However, you could, like I said, target actual German companies. Like I'm sure there's, uh, I, which I don't know the German market, but I'm sure because I'm basing this off of what I've seen here in the US uh, and other Western countries. If you come in there as a web designer and you offer very, like maybe it's, you're going to set up the website, plus you're going to add some custom stuff, you'll manage their website so that they don't have to worry about security. You can make some customizations. You can also set up an email list for them. Uh, like you're not going to be writing, but you're going to set up the email list for them and give them some various strategies. Like you're off the rip, you're going to stand out amongst all these other guys that are like, hey, I'm going to make a website for you. No, you, you come in, you make the website, you set up their email list, you get their marketing set up uh, with various ideas that can improve how they're approaching things uh, and you're going to stand out. Uh, so you could target, at least in the very beginning, German owned companies uh, and get a couple like proven concepts, maybe get a testimonial or two, and then yes. you could attack the English market. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, I go for like really companies or more like some coaches or yeah, so real companies or more like coaches and yeah, other service providers. Uh, can you type that out? Yeah, go for real companies. Uh, you can either go for real companies or you can just find online companies that uh, are offering like various services, products, et cetera, but they have like just terrible websites uh, because people like that most of the time are going to have money uh, sitting around. They could actually pay for a, a redesign on their website or you could even come in and offer them some kind of like management thing. So you could be more of a site management company uh where you yeah for coaches service providers yeah all of that uh so whether they're still info products whether it's a brick and mortar company whether it's a coach whether they're providing some kind of service yeah you could target all those types of people uh and then you would just come in with i'm going to set up your website i can customize it to fit whatever you're looking for uh I, personally i would give them like options because that's what i did back whenever i did uh, web design is I gave them three different options that they could choose from. Uh, that way it's just easier for you. And then you come in and you maintain the security of the website. So you make it stay up to date. You make like one to two customized or like customizations to the website every month. Uh, so like if they have a new product, et cetera. And then also uh, you could help connect their social media to their website. You could help connect any important aspects of their business to the website, whether it's booking, uh, a calendar, et cetera, what, uh, email lists, and that's just going to make you stand out. And yeah, you could have that pretty much systemized to where you could have a constant rollout of websites. And since you're offering the site management, you could be charging them 500 to a grand a month uh, just to manage their website. Yeah, so wise you can set it up to where it automatically uh, like requests money for me personally i just manually do everything uh, so like every month i'll i'll request the money and i'll be like yo uh like example uh tomorrow i'm going to be accepting a payment from a client so i'm just gonna i've already messaged them this morning uh but if for whatever reason which this has never happened but let's say they didn't send it to me yet uh like tomorrow i'll just message me hey uh, today, blah, 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 blah. And then they would pay me. Uh, so me personally, I like to do everything manually, but you could set it up to where it just automatically does it. Thank you. 
Uh, anytime, anytime. Let's see. I think we have room for one more question. Then I'm going to have to jump off. Oh, uh, hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? Uh, hey, uh, love your work, by the way. Read, all, read most of your stuff on Twitter and everywhere and Discord. I appreciate Just that. Just to ask you, is it worth to lower your price or give like extra free value if you see potential in the client growing and as, mm -hmm. as, as they make more money with your service? So, I mean, me personally, I would never uh, discount what I'm offering people, uh, but what you could do, uh, because I, I don't want, I don't want to install that frame in somebody's mind that yes, I am really good at what I do, but I can give you a discount. Uh, like for me, I'm the type of guy that I just charge premium. So like, this is how much I want. Here's what you're going to get. If you want it great. If not even better. Uh, but that's the point that I'm at uh, for you. What you could leverage more in is offering more value. So you could say, Hey, for most of my clients, I'm just throwing this number out there. Uh, for most of my clients, I do it for 2K a month uh, and they get this, this, and this. However, with your company, uh, what you're offering, I can really see us taking this to, the, this to the next level. So for that same 2K, I'll also be doing XYZ extra. Uh, so you could do something like that and you frame it more into, I'm charging, like I am charging the same rate. However, you're getting more for what you're paying me because- I see where you and I can take this business together and then it becomes more of a team oriented thing and less of, Hey, hire me. Oh, by the way, even though I am good at what I do, uh, I'll accept even less because you just don't want to have that frame. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. Okay. I just had a call before this call. I already had a call with a client and, um, he couldn't afford what I was charging. And to, mm -hmm. like, I offered free value first. Uh, it worked. He was really, really happy. Everybody was happy. His community. And then uh, uh, I told him my charging rate. Uh, my uh, and he, he was like, "Oh, we we did like two videos a week before." And now mm -hmm. he was like, "Oh, I cannot afford it. Maybe we can do one video a week." I was like, "I see potential in you. I'm gonna give you one video extra a week mm -hmm. uh, for the next like two weeks. And if it performs well, we can like, change it back. Like one, you can make it one video a week or not. If you like, you, you can start charging me for this as well." Okay. So yeah. And something like that, I, I think that's fine. I would be careful with that because those types of clients usually have more of a poverty mindset, which is not the best type of person to work with. But uh, if you do see potential with them, then yeah, I, mean, I think you made a good call on that. And it also gives you more experience that you can get a testimonial and you can get all that out of that guy. Uh, plus you're also getting paid. So I think for this particular guy, I think that was a good call uh, in the future you could just offer a smaller package. Uh, so let's say, once again, I'm just throwing this number out there. Let's say your usual fee is 2K and that gets you A, B, and C. Uh, you could also offer them instead of 2K for A, B, and C, you could offer them uh, for 1K, I'll give you A and B or something like that. Uh, that way you can still work together. You also understand their situation. You're going to get the results. And then at a later time, they can always upgrade to the full 2K. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Hi, right, anytime. Okay, guys, uh, I think that's about it. We will do another call. I want to say this coming Sunday. It's cool. I'll have to look at my schedule because I'm going to be bouncing around Miami, going to another place, uh, and then coming back. But the caveat to this is if any of you have any questions or anything, uh, one, you can tag me within Discord. Also, you can message me on Twitter. Uh, and if I don't respond to at Moneybag Lives within a couple of hours, feel free to reach out to Saint Moneybag because uh, that's not me that runs it, but they'll definitely let me know because I know one of you have already reached out to Saint Moneybag uh, and Saint Moneybag like, messaged me. was like, hey, this person keeps uh, asking a question. Uh, so if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me at Moneybag Lives or I don't even know the, the username, but I think it's like Saint underscore Moneybag uh, is like an, an alternative account that you can reach me. Uh, but yeah, if you have any other questions, message me there. Today, a lot of you are making uh, just amazing progress. I've spoken to a few of you behind the scenes as well. Keep doing what you're doing. If you have any questions, go to the resources first, because uh, I've dropped a ton of stuff to get you started there. Uh, we've also got some new modules that will be coming out. This will be recorded. 
Uh, so I'm going to post this to the group as well so that anybody else that wants to listen to this over, uh, maybe it was one of the questions I was answering, you can go through and re-listen to it. Otherwise, guys, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll talk to you all soon. What's going on? If anything from that call sounded interesting to you, click the link down below, because if you're somebody that wants to, go to travel the world and make money online, the number one thing you need to be doing right now is not crypto, it's not drop shipping, it's not any of these other shiny objects. It is building a skill and then learning how to monetize that skill. And I'm going to show you all of that and more in the next 15-minute video that I put together for you. Click the link down below, and I'll see you inside.